Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope y'all had a great uh, work week so far. Hope you had a great Wednesday. As we're working our way right on through the work week in the last couple of days of September, uh, it's been a very successful month for me here on YouTube. Uh, I've picked up a lot of growth. I just want to uh, tell you all how much I appreciate that route that died as we're about to enter October. Uh, this time of the year, as we're getting into October, kind of reminds me of springtime. Uh, things, you know, in springtime, there is things to talk about. Uh, you can talk about, especially when there's big time tornado threats. We never want that, but that's normally a big time topic in the spring. Uh, lots of severe weather outbreaks. But um, outside of that, normally you have relatively calm weather. Well, a lot of times in the fall, it's the same way. Yes, you can still get the hurricane threats. And you can still have some, you know, early season cold snaps and early season snowstorms. But uh, usually October and November can be kind of slow. So I appreciate you guys who tune in regardless of what the activity and how active it is and uh, who watch my videos uh, nightly or daily. So it's much appreciated. Your support is definitely appreciated. So if you guys have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, like the video if you like it. I'm going to just touch base on the tropics, give you an update. We have a newly formed storm called Tropical Storm Victor. And we're going to talk about what looks to be a warming trend as we're getting into October. In fact, I really don't see any big time cold fronts in the near future. Um, right now in the northeast is actually very cold. Not very cold, very, just kind of nippy. you got a nice fall air mass. And the mid-Atlantic is feeling it too around northern Virginia, points north into Pennsylvania. So we're going to touch base on that. Uh, so let's get going here. There's not a whole lot to discuss tonight, so I'm not going to, you know, make this video long and drawn out or anything like that. But right here, we'll take a look at the Atlantic Basin. Some tropical moisture still flooding into western areas of the Deep South, like Louisiana, Mississippi. Elsewhere, it's very dry. In fact, here in the Carolinas, even Georgia, Virginia, especially the Carolinas, have been pretty dry over the last several days. Um, you know, and it looks to be the case, and we'll talk about that continuing through the rest of the week into the weekend but you got sam sam just <clears throat> i swear it looks like it hasn't moved from the same spot that it was yesterday but it's still moving you know i said over a week ago that we were going to be talking about this for a while and we still are good thing about hurricane sam is is it's not going to affect anybody no longer a threat for bermuda no longer a threat for any areas of canada but you do have tropical storm victor out here but Victor is also not going to affect anybody. We're not even going to talk a ton on it because I really don't feel like there's any point to, but we'll talk about how strong it is here in a second. But so let's get going here. So like you said, like I said, you know, we got Tropical Storm Victor. The next name is Walt, it's not Walter, is Wanda. And then we're done with the first hurricane list. We're going to go into another one. So I'll briefly go over the hurricane list probably tomorrow on what the names look like on the next hurricane list. But gratefully and thankfully, over the, the month of September, which can typically be an extremely active and sometimes dangerous month, besides Hurricane Nicholas um, that hit a couple weeks ago, there really hasn't been any big-time threats. Like I've mentioned a couple times in the last few videos, thankfully, um, the ridge of high pressure that a the, the majority of people thought was going to be a dominant pattern over the North Atlantic, <clears throat> which was going to prevent tropical systems from curving north, has not really been in place. I mean, it has to a degree, but there's been avenues for storms like Hurricane Larry, like what Sam will do, like what Victor will do. Uh, for these things to really move and go um, back out to sea, turn north and then eventually northeast and round its way around the ridging of high pressure. So that's been the good news. Uh, you take a look at Sam, it's still 130 mile per hour major hurricane, but you notice Bermuda's right here, Canada's up here. This thing is just a fish storm. It's what we call storms that doesn't affect land and stays out in the ocean. This is also a fish storm. Tropical Storm Victor is basically just another name that's taken another name in the hurricane alphabet. It's a 40 mile per hour storm. It is forecast right now to briefly become a hurricane before weakening once it gains northern latitude and much more cooler sea surface temperatures, which tropical systems do not like. So we'll take a look at the GFS and the European and we'll see what's going on because I do want to mention the area in the Western Atlantic and also the Caribbean that could potentially fire up as we get into the first part of October, especially as we get into maybe maybe the middle part of October. But 
there's nothing, there's really no point in sounding any kind of alarms on anything that doesn't look to happen right now. But we'll talk about a signal that's showing up there in this video also. But look at Sam as we get into this weekend. Sam will begin to make its turn northeast, head out to sea. See this big time ridge of high pressure. Thankfully, you don't have anything out here um, that's a ridge of high pressure. So this thing is turning out to sea. Um, you have Victor, which is also taking kind of the avenue that that uh, Sam took, but it's able to turn much quicker because the ridging of high pressure in the northern Atlantic is beginning to slide more and more east. So uh, no threat there, but you notice some activity firing up here. You notice this L popping up here. This wants to be the next name storm according to the latest GFS, but um, this is starting to get into around around this time or the next or the, within about the next six or seven days out. Uh, wants to throw the potential for a tropical system off the coast of the eastern U.S. maybe next week. And this is this has kind of been flirting with this idea over the last several days. We'll see if we can get any consistency with the euro and the GFS. But like I've mentioned, the GFS has been the winner of the last two hurricane seasons as far as the most accurate um, with predicting these tropical systems model. So um, moving forward here, we'll look at the European model. As you can tell, that's Sam. This is Victor. Both of them heading out to sea. But you notice right in this area in the Caribbean, you notice more and more green begins to show up. That's tropical moisture. And uh, I think eventually something can get going here in this area. Look at the GEFS ensembles. Uh, it, it just basically try, show us, shows us a signal. And uh, you notice in this area that more yellowing shows up. That is basically signifying lowering of pressures. And as we're moving forward here, notice this area lightens up until it gets into a yellow. This is obviously Sam right here. And uh, notice as we're getting into next week, the first week of October, there's a little bit of a signal showing up here. The potential for some low pressures to develop some stronger storms as we get into late next week. But that's pretty far out. We got a lot to figure out before that. But guys, <clears throat> I'm not going to sit here and say there's going to be another threat for a tropical system. But I'm definitely not going to sit here and say there isn't. Um, we've seen, you know, Hurricane Michael, for example. We saw last year where Zeta made landfall just before Halloween, you know. So it's not over yet. It's been quiet to a sense where there hasn't been any kind of threatening tropical systems. But technically, it really hasn't been quiet. It's been very quiet compared, if you compare it to last year. Um, but really, there's been a lot of storms. There's just been a lot of fish storms over the last month. Very quiet period. Now, I want to mention the warmth that's going to be expected across the eastern U.S. These are dew points. Dew points signifies a moisture, either dry atmosphere. Right now, you have a very fall-like atmosphere over the northeast, and that's going to continue through the remainder of the week into the weekend. Then it's going to begin to fade away. You'll get more moist air that really gets into the mid-Atlantic and northeast. And these are dew points in the 60s, maybe some areas in the 50s. But this is the entire U.S., eastern U.S., and set areas in far Maine where you're normally in Maine, you're getting to that time of the year where you're really locked into a more cooler air mass before you get to the winter months. But, you know, check it out here. You know, as we're getting into around this time next week, you have a big plume of tropical moisture that tries this off the GFS, situate itself off the coast of the southeast. But I tell you what, it looks like it's going to stay relatively warm and relatively humid for this time of the year. Um, throughout the southeast, the mid-Atlantic, and just the south in general, um, and even in areas pretty far north up into the mid-Atlantic. And this looks to last all the way through the first entire week of, um, of October. Um, you know, I, I only normally look as far out as about 10 days, and we're about 10 days out, and I still don't see any big-time cold front. This just tends to happen, guys. You know, we were lucky to get about... I counted three cold fronts from most of the eastern U.S. Um, for for the eastern U.S. for September. Uh, you know, so it might be a little bit more of a warmer um, October, but we'll see. Maybe just the first part of October. It might get cooler towards the second half, but we'll check it out. I know I'm always a big fan of cooler than average falls. It kind of sets the tone for the colder months for me, so... I'm always I'm always going to favor more cold weather than warm weather. That's why I'm excited to talk about winter weather 
as we pull away from hurricane season and closer to winter. But uh, these are temperature temperature anomalies. Obviously, the the blues are more cooler than average temperature anomalies, and then the more reds and pinks are uh, warmer than average. So we're getting into this weekend. Um, notice that cooler air is still lingering around to the northeast, but eventually that fades away, and the next week becomes more of a warmer than average dominated pattern as we're getting through all the way through next week and it looks warmer than average all the way through next week i think it begins to lose that a little bit as we're getting to later into the week next week but still also want to mention you know uh rain through the weekend you're not going to see any rain for the a big chunk of the um, mid-atlantic and southeast but it looks like we will switch to a more rainier pattern as we get into maybe the early, sometime mid to maybe late part of next week. That's still up in the air. We got might get to more of a rainier pattern, which to me symbolizes, it even tells me even more that it's going to be more of a humid air mass. Uh, normally when this time of the year comes and you get more of a rainy pattern, um, it's, no, it's normally accompanied with more humid air, but sometimes you get more of just a rainy day, depending on where you are, just maybe a rainy day in the 70s. But that's pretty much it, guys. You know, there's nothing crazy to talk about. I think it's the weather's going to be kind of slow for the next several days, but I'll keep you all updated and see what's going on. I think the main thing I'm looking at right now is the Caribbean for anything you know, active to talk about. So I don't see any big time cold air masses anytime soon for the Eastern U.S. I'll keep you all updated. Thank you all for the amazing support. And uh, hopefully we can have another big month in October. I'm very excited for the future. Um, I think about it a lot. I try not to let it flood my thoughts, but um, I'm really excited about the future. And I might add different sections of my YouTube video, uh, YouTube channel, you know, I'm going to always talk about weather, but I might add different other thing, like kind of like a vlog type thing in, in, in the far future. So we'll see how that goes. But um, thank you all for the support. Y'all have a great night.